Cold Lake. <laughs> Can't forget Cold Lake. Oh man. Actually, this city gets its water from Cold Lake. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't move back to this city, but I always come to visit. <laughs> But I'll tell you guys, I got the Aprilia Tuono here today. Looking proper. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you the smart modifications that you should do to your bike and why. Stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. watching cycle cruises all on one motorcycle channel subscribe today continually video suggestions but you may find what you're looking for by visiting my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos and those are a bunch of playlists with all of my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through you know when you first buy a new motorcycle although i didn't buy this new i bought it slightly used the first thing you're going to want to do is put mods on the bike you know most of us but for me personally, when I buy a bike, I'm always thinking resale, you know, because most of the times you're going to sell the bike eventually. Uh, most of us bikers will probably sell it within a, you know, two, two to five years, maybe. Um, but I would tell you when you load your bike up with mods, like I did my WR250R, <laughs> I, I put a fortune into that bike, man. I must have put, oh my goodness, at least six, seven, eight thousand dollars in mods on that bike. I went overboard because I thought I was going to keep that bike. <laughs> but you know what? When I sold it, do you think I got that money out of the bike? Nope. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you the smart mods to do. But first off, I'm going to tell you guys the smart gear to get are these uh, heated gloves that keep you nice. Keep your hands nice and toasty on this cold 38 degree day here in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> and also for those of you guys who want to get my gear, like this airbag vest to help keep you safe. I think every rider should get one. And uh, this ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet, camel pants, leather pants, my boots, all my gear. I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos. The only thing that I did to this bike is I put on these uh bar and mirrors which i have links to by the a link to in the description and comment section of this video um these these are universal they'll fit on any motorcycle um the stock mirrors are fine but i like bar and mirrors so you can see nice and clear i like them and you have this open space here i like that it kind of helps me it kind of makes me feel like i'm on my uh my supermoto that I have. You know I have a 2019 uh, YZ450 FX that I converted to a street legal supermoto. And this Street Fighter kind of feels like that, you know, without that, uh, the mirrors and feels more free. Feels good. <laughs> Woo! Oh yeah, I love that. Uh, moto GP sound. <laughs> sounding proper you know what guys i've come to appreciate the stock exhaust on this bike you know i noted how quiet it is you know at lower rpms but when you when you get on that throttle man when you crank it up in the rpms you can, you can hear it oh man it sounds like a moto gp bike i like it man so honestly it's really unnecessary to get an aftermarket exhaust on this bike. Uh, like I told you, really the main reason why I didn't get one on this bike is because it costs like minimal two thousand dollars to put a slip on for this bike to have the dealer do it. Because you have to uh, change the ECU to a race ECU, or you have to have it updated uh, to the race settings. Or you have to get an exhaust like the Akrapovich exhaust, which has unlock codes. It, it's just very expensive to put a slip on on this bike. And when I go to sell it, you know what? I'm not going to get that money out of the bike. I've seen guys out there that had this at Priya Tuano uh, for sale, you know, at the uh, dealerships. And you know what, guys? <laughs> they put the uh, slip on, exhaust on, 
But yet, the price didn't go up because nobody's gonna want to pay extra for that slip-on exhaust. Uh, and then when you want to, you know, if you want to put the factory exhaust back on, then you got to go through the hassle of changing the ECU back to stock settings or put on the stock ECU. It's just a pain in the butt. So that's why, I, you know, I didn't do it for this bike. And to be honest with you, these new bikes have all these electronics on it. So it makes it more expensive to put, you know, a simple slip on on. That's why I, I like the older bikes, like my CBR 1000 RR that I used to own that I recently sold. I wish I'd have kept it, to be honest with you. That bike, you could put a $300 slip on, you're good, you know? Yeah, you're not going to get that money back, but what $300 is not that big of a deal uh, to lose that, you know, when you sell the bike. As opposed to, you know, putting the slip on on this bike and losing $2,000. <laughs> Forget that, man. But honestly... The smart mod to do to your bike is to do a fender eliminator kit, of course, to get rid of that ugly fender on the bike. Uh, and then I would, you know, keep the stock fender and then you can always put the stock fender back on and sell that uh, fender eliminator kit. Probably, obviously not at full price, but you can get some money back. And uh, a st exhaust, a slip on. Uh, as long as you don't have to pay two thousand dollars for it like I did with this bike But those are the only two mods you need to do out here is, is fender eliminator kit and put on a slip-on exhaust for a sound That's it. Don't waste your money on a full exhaust Big waste of money guys uh, Unless you're a track star out there and you need to squeeze out a little bit of extra power uh, Even in that case, it's not worth the all that money for a full exhaust. It's unnecessary, man. Uh, and make sure you keep the box for your slip-on exhaust so that you can swap back to the uh, the stock exhaust. Um, but like I said, the older bikes and some of the newer bikes that are basic and don't have all the electronics, I think like the Kawasaki Z900, I don't think that has all the newfangled electronics on it. Out of some of these newer bikes, you could put a slip-on on without having to do all this extra, you know, paying all this extra money for uh, ECU or changing the ECU or whatever. Uh, but to be honest with you guys, the smart mod is is to really not mod your bike. <laughs> Just put a fender eliminator kit on it. Otherwise, I say make sure you get a motorcycle that has a lot of the stuff you want on it already in factory in factory setup. Uh, because you know, like this, a Prius Tuono V4 1100 factory, the factory version of this. It has an Olin suspension. So if you're a track junkie, you're probably going to want that suspension. But if you're just like me and just crapping around out here on the streets, it's unnecessary. But if you go with the RR version, and then you want to upgrade to the Olin suspension because the, uh, the basic suspension that's on the RR version is not cutting it at the track, then it's going to cost you much more than the difference between the, the factory version and the RR version of this bike so that's why I always say you know if you're getting a new bike make sure it's got everything you want in the bike take your time on choosing the motorcycle you want to get and make sure you do the research to you know so you know find out you know what what it's gonna cost you to put a slip on on this bike and uh, any other mods that you want to do uh, and, and sometimes you know these Italian bikes and European bikes uh, you know, oftentimes the aftermarket support, you know, the parts are going to be more expensive than, say, the Japanese bikes, you know, aftermarket parts for the Japanese bikes. So that's something you need to take into consideration, uh, you know, when you're getting a motorcycle. In my opinion, you're better off just sticking with Japanese bikes. I know some people will tell you they're boring. They're not boring, guys. They're just built to near perfection and you won't have any troubles out of it <laughs> you'll be doing a lot more riding and fixing although this Aprilia has not bought you know I haven't had any problems since you know the first day I rode it the first day I rode it as a lot of you guys know uh, I went into lint mode let me pull over here this is bull man bull uh, which I didn't know it was lint mode and it freaked me out but I took it to the dealership. They updated the software, calibrated it, tightened the battery cables. 
and uh, I haven't had a problem since. This bike has been absolutely beautiful. But aftermarket support for this bike uh, is is not that great. It's compared to the Japanese bikes, and the parts are really expensive. So you have to keep that in mind. But anyways, guys, leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. That's why I do these videos. Appreciate all you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my All In One Motorcycle channel. Until next time, deuces. Thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. And check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto. Oh,